Hi guys, I'm Dave here with Scott Butterworth at Gamescom 2016. Now we've seen the same Prey demo, you were QuakeCon, me just yeah, over there. Exactly. So why don't we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, totally. So what what vibe were you getting from, from Prey? Because when it first booted up, when we were first presented with the demo, I was like, that is Bioshock, Dead Space and Dishonored in a game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's. You know, I'm always reluctant to compare games directly to other games. You know, everything kind of stands on its own, everything has its own vibe, but yeah, immediately upon seeing the opening area, it's like super Bioshock. There's yeah. this kind of like subdued creepiness to it. It's not really like an openly terrifying experience, but there's just like these ominous noises and this dark lighting. Yeah. And like at the very beginning, you see this little spidery creature just like flit up a staircase nearby. So it's, it's very creepy and unsettling, which was, which was very you cool. You mentioned that creature, um, the Mimic. Yeah. So yeah. I think they've got a really cool mechanic of, I don't think you can feel safe with those existing because... Yeah, the jump scares are inevitable yeah. because they're, they're these aliens that can... Mimic. Have, yeah, transform into basically any physics-based object in the game. It's very easy to kind of settle into when you can accept, a, a, expect a jump scare. Like, when you play Dead Space, you saw a necromorph on the ground, you are like, that's going to jump All right, yeah, it's like... Whereas this is like, you're not going to go through the game bashing every trash can or kicking over every dinner plate. Well, you could. You could, it's going to take ages to complete. Yeah. So no one's going to do that. So that's, that's cool that it's actually going to keep you on totally. your toes. This game is a little bit like Dishonored in that the hero, Morgan, has all of these different abilities, yeah. uh, many of which he actually gets from the aliens on the ship. So there are these items called uh, neuromods, exactly what they sound like. They modify your neurons. Via a needle through your eyes. Through eye. your eyes. So like the mimic alien, if you scan enough of them, you can actually take that ability and basically inject it into Morgan's brain. And once you've done that, he now has the ability to turn into any physics-based object. We saw in the demo that he turned into a coffee mug. A coffee mug. This was both through incredible and window. hilarious. They're yeah. like, okay, you can, do, you can turn into something small. It's reversal, it's exploration. But seeing just a coffee mug bounce yeah. around. It's super unexpected. It's not something you really get in a shooter. And, and to see it used in unexpected ways. Like I said, I, we saw them roll through an open window to yeah. get past a locked door. Very clever. Um, at a later point, uh, I saw Morgan turn into like a little spherical mine yeah. and roll through a room and then use some kind of like kinetic, kinetic force blast push to throw the small ball he was up into the air onto a balcony. Yeah, so which he never could have reached as, as a human. So right. I'm really excited to see what other powers are in the game because just Mimic on its own is really cool. And we know that there are going to be more things like that. And in talking to the devs, you actually can choose to never use any of the alien mods. If you want to go completely human, you absolutely can. This is very much like Dishonored in that it's player choice driven. Right. It's all about choice and consequences. It's all about adopting a play style that fits you. Uh, if you want to just run through with guns and kill everything you can. Although, as we also found out during this demo, there aren't that many guns. Right. in this game. Because like, it's, it's a research station. Exactly. Like, it's, you're on a space station orbiting the moon. You're the product of some experiment gone awry. So you're in a scientific setting. It's not like a military outpost. It's not like Doom. Not littered with machine guns. Yeah, like there's not an arsenal hanging out waiting for you. So a lot of the guns you end up using in the game are just repurposed scientific tools. Kind of like in Dead Space, actually. Um, the one that we saw most prominently in the demo is called the Glue Cannon. That looks so much fun. It's so clever as well. Yeah, so basically it just spews, uh, like, literally just glue, this, yeah. this sticky paste onto enemies and freezes them in place without killing them. But more importantly, that when the paste dries, it hardens and you can actually use this to create new pads for yourself. We saw them spray like a diagonal line up a wall. Yeah, just a big ramp going down Yeah, and once floor. that hardened, you, yeah, you suddenly had a new traversal path that you just built for yourself, which is really cool. I love the idea that this weapon can be used not only to neutralize enemies, but to but just as a floor. traversal tool. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like Half-Life 2's gravity gun could be used for like multiple things. And a little bit. It's something that's always fun and satisfying to use as well. I'm sure there's going to be people out there that's combining dozens of powers and a glue gun and everything else to just make basically a mess. <laughs> but some, another, um, well, it's not a powered piece of equipment, was the recycler, which I thought was amazing. It's like it's like a grenade. When you throw, it creates like a, a black hole. A mini black hole. It sucks everything into it and out pops like compressed... Crafting materials. Compressed resource materials. So like yeah. anything that's made of like, I don't know, carbon would just be like a tiny lump of carbon that you can then use. You could use it for exploration and moving objects. It's a good way to clear out mimics, apparently. Yeah, mimics anything that's hiding in a room. And the sentry bots, when he threw it in, in the demo, it just all got sucked in. And it was basically like watching a car get cubed, but to like a millionth of a degree. Yeah, it was this just tiny fun little to watch. Thing. Yeah, that's, that's also something that looks really And the really crafting satisfying. materials are very important because I discovered that that's how you upgrade your spacesuit, yeah. which allows you to then leave the space station and sort of fly around freely in like the debris field surrounding Talos 1, the space station, where you kind of wake up. 
Um, there is apparently going to be combat in, in Zero Gravity. I don't know how that's going to work. They haven't really elaborated, but that is going to be a thing. It's also going to be useful for traversal if you need to get from one side of the space station to the other. Yeah. Um, I was told that the structure is very open, but you can go anywhere in the station from the beginning of the game. The only thing that's going to prevent you from doing that is you will be killed if you try to go somewhere that's a little too advanced for you. Right. It's like yeah. an old school RPG where, you know, it's not, the game's not going to tell you not to go somewhere, but you will get murdered because you're just not leveled or ready to be in that area, which I think is really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing some Someone be like, screw that noise, I'm gonna spawn and then fight the final boss. Oh, I guarantee you there's gonna be some YouTube video of someone beating the game in 10 minutes and just sprinting all the way to the end. I don't think that's gonna be either of us, so. <laughs> no, it's not gonna be. Excited about Prey? Absolutely, I think it's looking really cool, a lot of ambitious ideas, and awesome. yeah, I hope it all comes together. It's coming next year, so they got a little bit of time, but yeah. we'll see. Ryan? Well, thanks for watching, guys. I've been Dave, joined by Scott, and stay tuned to GameSpot for more Gamescom 2016.